On today's show, Mavs fans are feeling pretty good about their matchup against the Clippers, but should they? We'll talk about things we want to see in the last couple of games for the Dallas Mavericks. And do we care about Luka winning the MVP? We'll talk about that and more on today's Lockdown Mavs. I'm Luka Doncic, and this is Lockdown Mavericks. Welcome to the Mavericks. NBA champion. He is the It's good. And the Mavericks have won the game. If you don't believe, you shouldn't be here. Loyalty never fades away. And welcome. You are locked on to the Dallas Mavericks. My name is Nick Engstead, media member and NBA channel manager for the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for being part of the show and making Lockdown Maps your first listen today. But the best way you can help us grow the show is to listen every day on any podcast platform, leave a five star review, like the video on YouTube, and comment anything below. Let me know your, your confidence level against the Clippers. Scale of zero to five. Five being to sweep confident mm. fully confident they'll win zero being you know what i think the maps are gonna lose let me know in the comment section today's episode is brought to you by stitch fix go check out stitch fix for all of your clothing needs all kinds of great stuff coming from there tell you a little bit more about that later and joining me from valley sports southwest if you've watched the beginning middle the end <laughs> sometimes not in that order of any dallas mavericks game <laughs> you've seen her what you got for me dana larson 50 wins, 50 Fitty. wins, 50 wins. Uh, that is two 50 win seasons in the last three years, Nick. Uh, you know who's been the head coach during those two <laughs> 50 win seasons? Never a doubt over here on this side of the pod. <laughs> we'll just forget the middle part. The middle we'll part didn't, the, the middle part That's didn't happen. Right. Because this is all oh. that matters. The Mavericks are headed to the playoffs, and it's been an unbelievable run here, winning 16 of their last 18 games. It's wild. Amazing, amazing. They've they've done so well, and I'm glad that I I'm glad that I put that pressure on Jason Kidd to perform. And I'm glad <laughs> <laughs> we owe you. We owe I'm you. Glad that, I'm glad that if somebody, you know, he just needed a, a seed of doubt placed in his mind. That's and then. right. And there's there's no gloating over here. It's just sometimes the voice of reason. Uh, you know, you've got to just take a breath at times, right? For sure. <laughs> and they've proven me, like, kids proven me wrong several times since then. And the Mavs have played really well at the end of this. And I am very glad. I'm very glad to admit right. that. I'm very glad that they have. <laughs> Today, the Mavs have two games left. They got 50 wins. Kyrie got his million dollar bonus. Shout out, shout out to him. Dang, right. <laughs> shout out to him. But we'll talk about what we want to see in the last two games of the season. Is there anything? Is, do we want to see rest from some of these stars? What do we want to see from, you know, is Derek Lively going to return? Let's talk about some other players too. And we'll talk about Luka MVP. Do we care about it? Is it is it still up in the air? Is it possible? We'll talk about that. But I want to start here. The Dallas Mavericks are in the playoffs we know this for sure no play in for the mavericks so the play in weekend can be fun again where we can just watch the play in and say wow look at those sons who are in the play in and just uh <laughs> like just think about their their stress that the fans that, that the lakers fans are having and warriors fans and kings fans and Suns fans probably are all gonna have during that and i'm, I'm very grateful as an nba fan and a basketball fan that the mavs get to avoid that and we can just enjoy that week because it is pretty fun to watch the play in no doubt about it. I locked on Suns, I'm sure, has a lot of consternation. You can see all of the bad vibes coming out of oh. that whole thing right now, too. The, the there's no chemistry, there's you know, no fight, there's all of those things. And it's it is, it is so nice to be talking about the other extreme because the Mavericks are so tied together. They are the epitome of a team right now. Uh, there is so much chemistry and incredible amount of momentum, which is exactly what you want at this time of the year. Absolutely. And so now the Mavs are pretty much locked into the four or five. They're, they're two and a half games ahead of the Pelicans right now uh, with the tiebreaker. And so I think that one I think that one's yeah. done. <laughs> so yep. uh, and so now the Mavs can still get to four and get home court advantage in the first round. It is still possible. It's not likely at all that Mavs would have to win their last two games against Detroit. Feeling good about that one. And then OKC, who are still in their battle for one, two, or three in the West. Yeah. So I think that at this point we know that OKC will probably still be playing for something at that point, because we've speculated all year. Well, maybe OKC won't have anything to play for. I think that they will at this point. So a very winnable game against Detroit and then a, you know, a game against OKC that maybe the Mavs won't have anything to play for because Mavs also have to have the Clippers lose their last two games 
and they play against Utah oof, and Houston. <laughs> so and Houston. Yeah. It's, it's, it's out there. It's not likely it's not probable, but the Mavs can still get four. How important do you think it would be to get four or are the Mavericks? Can they just, do we remember that these teams always win road games in these series anyway? Like they did. The I last think that's times. it, right? You, sure. You would feel, feel great about, get, I mean, imagine if you found a way to get to four by the end of this season, that that would be incredible. And you always feel better starting at home, but this team does not lack confidence on the road. That is for sure. Mm. 25 road wins this year, the most since the 2011 championship season. Um, I think they enjoy that sort of road mentality. The season started out with them playing, you know, across the world and they had to already sort of start getting or preseason rather, I guess, you know, in Abu Dhabi and in Spain and all of that stuff. So I think they already built that sort of road warrior mentality. Um, And so I think, I don't think they fear starting on the road. That is what a metaphor for this season that they started on the road, like across, across the pond, all the way across over there. I had like blocked that out of my memory. That was so long ago. It feels like, and this team feels so different compared to that team. It's still Luca Kyrie. Like most of the, most of the players are all still the same from there, but just adding the PJ Washington and the Derek, uh, not the, the uh, Daniel Gafford, and uh, and yeah, having a couple guys emerge has been awesome for the Mavericks. Right now, so the Mavs will play the Clippers, whether they have home court advantage or not. Confidence level playing against the Clippers in round one. This is just a general like, how do you feel? And to me, these teams are going in complete opposite directions. Now the Clippers have been good over the la- over their last like couple weeks or so. They're seven and three in their last ten. They've played you know played decently well, but Kawhi has missed the last you know, six games and he's, his injury is, is, is very strange right now. We don't know if he's going to start the playoffs. He did not travel to Phoenix for those two games. Ty Lue on April 4th, which is now like a week ago said he's, he's going to go through his rehab process, which anytime somebody brings up like a rehab process Mm -hmm. for some kind of thing like that, it doesn't, that doesn't scream to me. We're doing this precautionary, right? Like I think it actually is some kind of injury. Then on April 5th, the next day, the team said they're hopeful he'll return sometime next week in time to play the final two or three games of the regular season. Well, the two, the three games of the regular season, they can't do that anymore. There's only two of them left. So if we see Kawhi in one of these last two games, maybe that gives us an idea if he's going to play and what condition he's going to be in and all that. But that's still kind of all up in the air right now. So that kind of, that kind of boosts my confidence level a little. If I had to give it a number and I asked the listeners to give me a number, zero to five, zero being I have no confidence. I think the Mavs will get swept. There's there's no chance. Five being real confident. Mavs will 100% win this series. I'm going four. I'm going okay. four. I have, I, have, I have lots of confidence in this team right now. Mavs are going up. Clippers are going down. And the Clippers' defense over the last couple of months has been really tough. Really tough in a bad way for, for them. It's been, <laughs> it's been like bottom five in the league. Uh, and I think that they're going in a, in a bad direction. And I'm not sure that this specific Clippers team is one that can just turn it on in the way that they have in the past. You know how the Nuggets last year coasted for like the last two months mm-hmm. of the season, then all of a sudden just turned it back on. Especially with a Kawhi injury, I'm not sure they can do that. So for that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay with four. That I still, will, I still think the Clippers can absolutely win this series, but I'm real confident in the Mavs right now. Okay, I like that. I like that. I, I, think, I think I'm at like 3.9, <laughs> maybe. What's, I, what's, the, not, what's the I, I, 10? What's the 10th? What's I don't, you know, I don't totally know why. I think it's just that I do feel like this is one of the tougher matchups they could have ended up with. Mm. Um, and, you know, there's, and they've not had a lot of playoff success against the Clippers in the past, you know, played them uh, a couple of years ago, lost both of them. But this is, you know, entirely different teams for sure. What you do wonder, right? Are you seeing the Clipper team that um, was like unbelievable in January and February? Or are you seeing that team in March that all of a sudden you went, oh, okay, there's some things that are coming back here a little bit. They lost like six of nine. Westbrook was out for the majority of those. Actually, really felt like Russell Westbrook's injury in that stretch was a real problem for them. And anytime you're talking about Kawhi and a knee issue, uh, it's there's always like mystery surrounding it. And I don't know why you would even at this point want him to come back and play in any of the games remaining because you, you don't want to take any chance or risk right. anything with him. Then you've got Paul George knee soreness. 
James Harden, right foot inflammation. And Westbrook still dealing with the repercussions of that, that hand injury that, that had him out. So these were already, you know, when they made the trade, and even when they've had, they've kind of been putting this team together, they were already sort of the little snickers about, you know, yeah, these guys are future Hall of Famers, but they're getting up there in age, right? <laughs> like, this is a little bit older team. This is where they've played, to their credit, they've played way more games together this year, and that was what everybody wanted to see. Now they're dealing with some some things here at the wrong time. So I agree. Those are the reasons that make you feel a little bit better um, and, and even more confident. And like you said, the Mavericks on the flip side are healthy, are playing incredible basketball, are absolutely defending. And that's going to be, you know, a huge part of how they get out of the first round. Yeah, coming up, let's talk about why I have some confidence in this matchup, why Dana has maybe a little less confidence than me, but still some still some confidence in this matchup. And we'll talk about Luca and the MVP and more coming up. Today's episode is brought to you by Stitch Fix. Stitch Fix is a service that helps you boost your confidence because everyone has that instant confidence boost when you're wearing something that just feels good, that looks good, that you know that was right in your budget and hit all the marks right there. And Stitch Fix will give you a stylist to help you understand your style, your budget, and your size and help you do all the shopping for you. The easiest way to update your wardrobe this season, go check out Stitch Fix. I got a box. I put in I, basically like a dating app for for your for clothes. You go through, they show you a bunch of different outfits after you walk through like your size and your style preferences. And then you swipe, you swipe. I like this, I don't like this, I like this, I don't like this. And you pick different things out from an outfit and then they put it all together and the stylist decides, let me send you this kind of stuff. And then even then, once they send you stuff, you can still look through it, pick the things that are just right for you. And I like that you're able to send it back and then you don't have to pay for the stuff that they sent you that you didn't like. And then you keep the stuff that you do. Do all that. Shipping, returns, and exchanges are always free, which is great. They send you stuff right in the box that you can send back. Style that makes you feel as good as you look. Get started today at stitchfix.com slash locked on. Again, stitchfix.com slash locked on. Just go to the site, see what's there. Stitchfix.com slash locked on. Today, we're also brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, patience. It's what the Dallas Mavericks have had the last couple months of the season. The formula for winning a championship is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your car and level it up to peak performance. They have things like superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts to choose from for your number one ride or die, they will always find exactly what you need. And they have this eBay guaranteed fit, which is super important because you know that part is always gonna fit your car Every single time I'm looking for a part for my dishwasher and I wish that I had this eBay guaranteed fit for that because I don't know if it's going to fit exactly right, but I would, I would if it was a car and if it was eBay Motors. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusion supply, eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us on Lockdown Maps, being part of the show, part of the Raccoon Squad, listening every day. We appreciate each and every one of you for checking out the show and for being part of the crew. Go check out Lockdown Sports Dallas on uh, on YouTube, the YouTube channel, as well as Amazon Fire TV. We've got all of our Lockdown Dallas shows and national shows playing 24-7. So if you're just like, I don't know what to watch today, just turn it on and then see what show is on there and see if you like it. Could be me. Could be somebody else. So, <laughs> all right, Dana, let's keep talking about the Clippers. We've got some confidence. We're feeling pretty good about yes. the confidence. At least, yes. it, at least it, it's possible. It's not. What, mm-hmm. It's not like we're going into the series going very oh possible. Gosh, the Mavs have no shot. They just have no shot of it. We're not doing that. The Kawhi injury is is very interesting. I also, I am I'm very wary, and I would like everyone that's listening to be very wary of anybody that brings up the regular season record for this matchup. Yes. Clippers Clippers won two to one. If anyone says that as a reason for right. confidence for either side, They've just throw not it away. Been watching. Yes. Throw their whole opinion away. Because this Mavericks team is completely different. And yes, the Clippers team is different than the one we saw, you know, two or three years ago. But this Mavs team is completely different than they were two or three months two or three months ago. Right. And all the games between the Mavs and the Clippers happened before Christmas. And Derek Lively only played in one of them, by the way. And the Mavs right. won that and the Mavs won that game. And he didn't play in the other ones. So I'm very curious, and we'll talk about Lively a little bit later, but uh, I'm, I'm curious how the, this Mavericks team will look against this Clippers team, especially if they try to go small, if they try to do something like that, and, uh, and how will the Mavs like counter that? 
Well, I do think that's interesting with with Lively. And Lively, do you want to get into Lively now or should we say yeah, that? Yeah, let's do it now. He's been out since okay. April 2nd. He's been right. out for six games. And I'm curious, like, he he played the only game that the Mavs won against the Clippers. He played 26 minutes. He had six points, four rebounds. He fouled out of that game, but he was a yeah. plus 15. Maxie as was many also points out that, as he had out. fouls, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Right. Maxie was also out that game. So they just needed yeah. they needed a big body, and it, it yeah. helped them. I thought it really did. And, uh, and yeah, now – I'm not sure exactly when he's going to return, but the the prognosis was like he would return right before the playoffs. Right. And the fact that they avoided the play-in was great for him because now they have this extra time. They do have this extra time. And there's, you know, basically zero chance he is available for these these final two regular season games. We've right. heard that much right. from Jason Kidd. And yes, is he going to be available at all in the playoffs is a really good question. I think he's come so far to from the first half of the season, you know, the, the first half of his rookie season. I mean, he is really somebody now that you're not as worried about getting in foul trouble and, you know, completely taking himself out of a game. I do think he's somebody that um, Jason Kidd trusts, you know, quite a bit more. The question will be, though, he will have not played for yeah. a pretty good chunk of time now. If you add in the next, you know, 10 days or whatever it is before they actually three weeks. get started. Right. And so now you are thrown into the fire. I mean, truly, as um, Kyrie Irving put it, when you get to the playoffs, this is this is where the grownups are. Um, mm. And so you've you've got to be ready. You've got to be um, you've got to have studied up and you cannot be slow in any way with anything that you do, especially against a, a team, a veteran team like the Clippers. So I, I think it will be really interesting to see. Yeah. How much he is used. Maybe they don't need a ton of minutes from him, but how nice that you have, you know, somebody like a Derek lively that is coming off your bench and can give you, um, you know, that chunk of time that you need, um, and so I think it's yet to be determined. And I think the injury recovery will have a lot to say about that too. Yeah. He's he'll get six fouls in a game and maybe, right. they'll, maybe they'll, maybe they'll need those. And he, had, he <laughs> right. used them all in the first time he played them. Yeah. I, I'm just curious. And I, I don't think that they need him in this matchup necessarily in that sense. Like, Oh, if lively doesn't play, I'm going from a four confidence to a three confidence or a two confidence. Agree. Um, but if he does, I think it would be helpful. And just to have one more guy off the bench, maybe Gaffer gets in foul trouble. Maybe the Mavs realize, oh, playing big against this team is better. Uh, and so maybe they, they realize that. And then it'd be nice to have two guys like this again to to try out. But Big um, has been better yeah, we'll for see. the Mavericks now for a while. So yeah. I do think they really, really like that particular option. Yeah. But Maxi at the five, if, if we're not counting that as a small lineup, that, that lineup has been really good. And so... I think and we'll one they've often series, used against the Clippers. Right. Maxi right, has been one that they have turned to, yeah, quite often, yeah. Let's talk about Luka MVP real quick because in the last couple of games, it's going to be a conversation. There's there's a lot there's a lot going on with it. Um, FanDuel has completely taken down the MVP odds. Like completely because mm. it was Jokic minus 5,000, Luka plus 2,500. They've completely wow. taken it down. Have we just given up hope that he's going to be the MVP at all? Yeah, I mean, I think maybe that, <laughs> unfortunately, I know it sounded so defeated. That was a sad, um, that was a sad, it yeah. Was, it was, it made me sad <laughs> to even say it, um, because it doesn't make any sense. And, um, you know, it's truly, here's, you know, you want to throw some more stats out. You know what Luca has done against the Clippers, by the way? Um, he owns the Clippers, so that gives me even more <laughs> confidence. He has five 40-point games against them in the playoffs, in the playoffs, like, so I just know, I feel like he, he may not get the MVP and then he's just going to be incredible in this first round against the Clippers. And it's just going to continue to support, you know, the point that he should have been an absolute legitimate um, option for this, that he is going to finish this year doing something that nobody has ever done. His stat line will be something we've never seen before at the end of a season in the NBA he makes history on a nightly basis. He wows us on a nightly basis. He has this team to 50 wins in an incredible position going into the playoffs. That's what you wanted to see. Um, it's, it is frustrating, you know, and I just think so much of the voting must happen. Decisions must be made so much earlier in the year. And there were too many things, too many other factors for this Maverick season that had them lower in the standings. 
um, and, and, and taking Luca out of the picture, I guess, you know, but um, it's, you just want validation for him because he, he, he came at the beginning of the year. He absolutely came in. He challenged himself. He challenged the organization. He challenged his teammates and they've all, you know, stepped up. They built this team to be better around him. He forced himself to be in great shape uh, and has been there and hasn't missed games. And, you know, and he's carried them when Kyrie wasn't available. It, it's, it's as everybody now is really saying, it's an MVP worthy campaign. That's all you can, in the end, say about it. It absolutely is. And honestly, Jokic just had an MVP worthy campaign True. too. You know, there was two awards. It, they couldn't do East West because they're both in the West and the West is way harder than the East right. is. But like it's hard it's hard to look at it and to it's, it's all subjective because it's all subjective about it what is. each individual voter thinks is what's who's the most valuable and all that Jokic is like even Jokic's splits his on off splits are, are better than than Luca's and you have to like and it's kind of because Denver plays these like all bench lineups that we saw last night against you know mm. in, in a game uh and so th there's all kinds of different things and context and all that and so I think I hope Luca comes in second at least. The highest he's ever finished is fourth. But yeah, I'm I'm also kind of resigned to. I'm gonna do this Sean Heath when he announces a foul for a Mavs. Like, <laughs> foul on Josh Green. Like, like oh, you, if you heard him he do does. that in, in a Mavs game. He does. The Mavs PA. He does. Announcer. I love that about that. him. Yes. <sighs> Luca's not gonna be the MVP. I think I think I've I think I've come I think I've come to terms with it. To come to I know everybody did everybody put their best campaign out there. You did, the Mavs did, Luca did, you know, you you everybody left everything on the court. That's all you can say at the end of the day. I mean Luca Luca, I don't know if he did. Remember what Embiid did last year? Embiid basically like begged for it last year. So can Luca just beg? Okay. Beg. I guess you're right. <laughs> I was meaning he let the you know the, the, the play do the talking, but maybe that was maybe the that problem. doesn't work. Maybe he you know? does need to be out there. There's clearly no voter fatigue um with Jokic, which is interesting because that's been, you know, that narrative comes up quite often. Wow. Here's a guy who's, who's going to win it three times now, you know, um, and that I felt like if you were looking at those narratives and that you could go, Luke, if, if this is his moment. Um, and maybe, maybe this was just step one to his moment. Well, and there's nothing to hold Luca back from doing this again next year too. the team, the sure. team is set year after everybody... year. Pretty much everybody's going to be, be be back. And so, yeah, this is something that we can watch next year. And uh, I guess we'll start MVP watch again all, right. all, all over again <laughs> next year. Coming up, let's talk about what you actually watch in the last two games. Because I got some things that I'm looking for that I want the Mavericks to do. And let's get into some of that coming up. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. I mentioned that FanDuel already has taken down the MVP odds, but there are all kinds of other things that you can get in on. Uh, oh, they put it back up. Jokic minus 5,000. Luka plus 2,500. They put it up from last night. Uh, so you can, if you feel confident that that you know something that everybody else doesn't know and you put money down on Luka, you can do that. But they have all kinds of other stuff too. They have uh, the odds for winning the title. All oh, the Mavs have moved up in that too. They were like 2,500. Last night, now they're plus 1,800. The only teams ahead of them are the Celtics, the Nuggets, the Clippers, the Thunder, the Bucks, and the Timberwolves. I don't know that you can short the Clippers bet right there. I don't know that that's something you can do where you bet. Can I bet that they don't make it to the championship? Can I do the opposite of that? Uh, like, like you're doing like the housing market or something? I don't think you can do that. But go check out FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. And new customers get 150 bucks in bonus bets. If you put down, if your bet wins, go check it out. FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Uh-oh, guess what day it is? Guess what day it is, huh? Anybody? All right, Dana, let's talk about the final two games. The the formatting of this episode was completely off. I thought we were going to start with this, and then <laughs> I changed it up, and I just changed my mind all throughout this episode. I'm just went. over here on the edge of my seat, wondering where we're going next. <laughs> I don't even know where we're going. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, who who keeps track of these podcasts? Who's the channel manager of this channel? Yeah, <laughs> get, this, get this host under control. Last <laughs> couple games of the season. There's two games left. What do we want to see? What what even is the point? They've locked up the four or five. Maybe maybe four can is possible for them. But what are some things we want to see? One thing I want to see. I want to see a bunch of shots get up from some guys. Let's let's get some rhythm for some of these guys because last six games, mm -hmm. Derek Jones Jr. is shooting seven of twenty four from three, twenty nine percent. 
Dante Exum, who's been the 50% three-point shooter, right. he's shooting 5 of 15 from three. That's 33%. Tim Hardaway Jr., 9 of 35. That's 25%. Josh Green just came back, but he was one of three from three last night against the Heat. Uh, even Maxi, he's shot 40%, 4 of 10, but he's only taken 10 threes in the last six games. And so I want to see some rhythm from some of these guys. Can we just get, can we just focus on maybe the Detroit game is just like get as many shots up as those guys can possibly get just so that we can like get maybe let's, let's see some go down here. It, it, that's exactly what needs to be happening. All of those guys that you just mentioned, I had Maxi on there too, um, mm. because I'm excited because I feel like he, he does look like he, the last three games is finding a little more rhythm. And then I want it to be confident um, you know, you know, like you see it with Maxi Kleba when he is confident. Um, it's a totally different, different animal. And I know we're not looking to Maxi for offense, but when you are seeing those threes goes down, it does change a lot of things. Huge. Um, I think you're right. I think honestly, if we see maybe Luca and Kyrie do like an obligatory five minutes in the first quarter at home to acknowledge the home crowd in the <laughs> final home game of the season and then sit. And that's the last we see of them until game one. That would be just fine with me. I, I have, mm. I'm like on pins and needles with all these players right now, watching them in these games. Cause you're just, <laughs> you know, you don't want anyone to get hurt. You saw Derek Jones yeah. jr. Kind of grimacing with the shoulder thing in Miami. And you're like, no, no, no. And we're all, you know, just totally spooked from what happened to Luca two years ago. Oh, um, yeah you know, in the final game of the regular season. And then he was out for the start of the playoffs. So it is just like bubble wrap these guys. Um, you know, it, it, like you said, get some good hardy minutes in, let's get him out there. <laughs> Let, you know, let's get in some run here at the end of the season, because with the return of Josh green too, we're probably going to see next to nothing of Jaden Hardy, you know, barring an injury yeah. situation or whatever. I think Josh green is another one who these are big games for him. These are yeah. really important minutes where he can reintegrate himself, start to get some rhythm back, feel good, um, you know, with where he is in the mix. So I, that's, I agree with you on that. Yeah. Josh Green played against Miami the other night. He hadn't played since March 14th. He missed 12 games in that stretch. And uh, yeah, this is, these are big games for him to just get some rhythm, maybe get, you know, hit, throw up, throw up some shots, get some, you know, some actual play under his belt. But so you're fine with resting stars. Like you would, you'd rather Luca and Kyrie rest the last two games and just not see I, them at all. I, yes, I really would. I feel like those are two guys I'm not worried about with knowing yeah. how to to be ready through a, you know a long layoff. Um, I 100 percent trust those two to know how to to you know avoid getting rusty. Um, and I just think health. Like Kyrie Irving was asked was asked after the Miami game. I think they kind of described it to him. Like you don't have, you know, you've got like 10, 11 days without like a meaningful game. If you count these last two games of the yeah. regular season and his face lit up, he, the idea of not playing for a long stretch was like music to his ears. And I thought, man, that says a lot. They yeah. have been, they have been laying it all out there um, down these, you know, these last couple weeks down the stretch. And I think they really need it. Um, you hate to lose any sort of rhythm. I get that. But I just think those two, I'm not worried about them. And their their game has not really been predicated on rhythm. This is not the, you know, live or die by the three Mavs. And like, okay, if this, if this, or if this completely, if this can fall apart at any moment, basically it's, I mean, they have withstood things, the Houston comeback, the, you know, the Denver game that there's been a lot of like the, the second Kings game. There's been a lot of games where this team fought through things and it hasn't just been, Oh my gosh, everything's good. Even that Miami game last night, the first half, they were shooting the lights out and everything was going great and everything mm -hmm. was going perfect. And it was like, oh, it was like Jason Kidd had a game plan of like five things and all five things were checked off in the first half. You're like, oh, no notes, no notes. And then the second half comes and the offense completely falls apart and they have to adjust and they have to fight through it and all that. And this team has proved to be resilient in that way. So I'm not worried. I'm not even worried that much about Rust. I'd like to get these guys some shots, like the role players, I'm not worried about Luca or Kyrie. How ironic, though, that the Mavs, if they do rest Luka and Kyrie, we have no confirmation that they are going to, but if right, they do, right. the Mavs would be punting the last two games of the season. What, uh -oh. an, egre uh -oh. what an egregious thing for a franchise uh -oh. to do. Can't believe the Mavs would do something like that. Oh, uh -oh. so bad. Terrible. Gosh. I, Can't believe they would well. punt two games like that. 
That's so true. That's so true. It's a stain on the sport, Dana. I know. And I guess, you know, you bring up the Thunder one, too, and, and, and they could really be playing for something. And so for the integrity of the game... You know, uh, <laughs> do you need to have, you know, do you need to be playing like a le- with le- your legitimate roster um, if if the Thunder and, you know, Denver and Minnesota are, are still battling up there? Um, so I, I don't know. I think at this point, you just got to worry about yourself. <laughs> I'm fine with, re- I'm fine with the rest of the I'm fine with the resting them too. The four seed is just so far out there. Like the, it's their mathematical. It's, it's just almost the same odds as last year making the play in. Like it's just mathematically impossible for them because I think the Clippers will win either the Utah game and Utah has what well, they've right. lost what like uh, thirteen straight games. Utah has so I don't and, know. Maybe and Houston equally is done. Um, you know, yeah. I mean they're they're obviously totally out and and those players are just counting down to their you know, vacations on the beach. One, two, One, three, two three, Cancun. Cancun. <laughs> so I, I just think that the odds are so, so far that I, I would much rather like get some rest for Luca and, and especially Kyrie. Luca got, just got a, a rest game recently, but Kyrie, he, he's been through it. This is the most games straight that he's played. What was it since like 2015, 2014, 16, maybe was the last time that I checked. Uh, he hasn't played this many games straight in that long. And so getting those guys some rest, totally fine with it. Want to see the rest in the last two games. A um, couple other quick things that I would like to see. Derek Jones Jr.'s drives to the rim. Like, I would like to see a couple more things like that because in that Miami game, he had like a drive stop, pull up, like like a mid-range shot and a couple things like that. Like, his confidence driving to the rim, I think, will be really helpful for the Mavericks in the playoffs, and that's something I would like to see him get a couple more reps doing that in the last two games. Well, and, and you're right. I like one thought that came to mind was, you know, non-Luka minutes, confidence, in mm-hmm. non Luca minute situation. So to your point there, if there aren't Luca and Kyrie out there, you're, and you're going to have all these opportunities to do things right. And to work on your game and uh, to, to try things and sort of be in the lab right here at the end of the season. And then have, you know, some experience in your mind on, on those moments for going down the road. You you may or may not have a lot of opportunities. You may not have the ball in your hand for that kind of thing when everybody's healthy, but I agree. Yeah, I like seeing that. I think PJ Washington Jr. is another guy who yeah. could really, you know, work. He's got that uh versatility offensively. He's got a, a a decent bag of options offensively and he should he should go and show them. Work on him. Yep, that was going to be my last point is I would like to see PJ Washington with the ball in his hands a little bit because I think he's going to be tested in the playoffs a lot. I think that teams are going to allow him to be open because they are just going to have to pick your poison. They're going to have to pick a thing. Like, are we going to let Luca or Kyrie get a one-on-one or be, you know, like are we going to go double them or blitz them off a of pick and roll or, or do whatever? And I think PJ is going to have to make a bunch of decisions in the playoffs. And so let's just get, put the ball in his hands. I don't think he has to run pick and rolls, but just like, Get put the ball in his hands and allow him to just make some decisions. The the drives and floaters, attacking closeouts, taking shots. Like get PJ Washington the most touches he's had as a Maverick the last two games. I, I totally agree with that because he is going to be needed in a big way in this in this matchup in particular too. Because mm. you know Kyrie and Luca can can match the scoring of of the of Kawhi and Paul George, right? But then they've got Harden and they've got Westbrook off the bench, and you've got to be able to have a third score or a, a, you know, a committee of guys who are going to be able to, um, you know, contribute and match those kind of guys production as well. And and we're looking right at you, PJ Washington, Jr. This, this is awesome for him. He's in the playoffs. This is what he's been dying for. for He's been living for, you could see what it means to him. And uh, now you just want him out there and, and really contributing. It'd be, it'd be awesome. Absolutely. There you go. That's some things we want to see in the last couple of games. That's our thoughts on resting Luca and Kyrie on the MVP, <laughs> on the Clippers, on the playoff scenario, all that kind of stuff. Go check out uh, Lockdown Sports Dallas on YouTube and Amazon Fire TV. Go check out Lockdown NBA. I talked about the Mavericks there with Pat the Designer last night. So check out that episode. And then we'll continue to do pods. I'll do an episode with Isaac next week. We'll do an episode with Lockdown Clippers, Darian Vaziri. We'll do all kinds of preview stuff. Slightly will come on even though we don't have games. Dana will be back on probably next week. And so we'll continue to just keep doing games until the until the Mavs. Uh, I said eliminated last night and a lot of people got really mad at me. So oh, yeah. we'll keep that- we'll do we'll do episodes until the Mavs win uh, it all. Until the, <laughs> until the franchise folds. How about that? <laughs> the whole, 
<laughs> Thanks so much for listening to Logs on Maps. Peace out. Boom. Till Cuban says, uh, pack it up. We're going home. Party. No, no, no more maps. Party. People.